Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we're going to talk about two crossover comics from the 90s featuring Spawn and Batman. And I have both versions here. This is the Doug Mensch, uh, Chuck Dixon written version, uh, which is apparently in continuity in the DC Universe, kind of, or they don't say it isn't. Uh, it's called War Devil. And then there's also just the straight up Spawn Batman crossover that Frank Miller wrote and Todd McFarlane drew. And there's actually something about this book that I found out that I didn't know about. Uh, but first, I want to say that, you know, for those of you who can't find copies of these, because I understand, you know, they were printed in the 90s, and I don't think they were ever reprinted until this past week. Luckily, there was a cool hardcover put out, Spawn Batman, and it has both the War Devil one-shot in here and the one-shot that was written by Frank Miller and drawn by Todd McFarlane. So both of those books I just showed you have now been reprinted in this new format, um, and it is available at your local comic store, Amazon, wherever you buy your books. You can pick it up. Uh, it retails for $19.99. And uh, it's it's cool to reread these. I Obviously, I've had those two in my collection for a while, my Spawn collection. But it's been a while since I flipped through them. So I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to just sit down and read them back to back. And like I said, in the beginning of the book, they don't tell you that the first crossover, War Devil, they don't tell you that that's not continuity. They just, you know, make you think it could be. You know, it's uh, Spawn and Batman teaming up. It's a story by Doug Mensch and Chuck Dixon, um, and Alan Grant and Klaus Janssen do the artwork. And it's uh, it's pretty neat. It's about Croatoa, um, the, the word Croatoa from, from Roanoke Island, if you don't know, if you're not from the, the Carolinas, uh, like I'm in from that area. Uh, they have a story in uh, from North Carolina about Roanoke Island. And apparently at one point in the late 1500s, a whole colony of people went missing. And the only thing they found was carved into a tree, uh, Croatoa. And there's been movies and all kind of cool stuff made about it. I think Supernatural did an episode about Croatoa. Like, there's a lot of cool, interesting lore about what possibly could have happened to all those people. So this kind of tries to answer that and reveals that Croatoa is actually a name of a demon that went and, uh, you know, took over that whole island and sacrificed everybody uh, to to Satan, essentially, uh, so that way they could as ascend as a, a knight in hell or something. And uh, and apparently a hundred souls wasn't enough, so now the ancestor of, the, of one of those people from that town is now in Gotham. He's working with this guy that was killed six years ago who was shot, and, uh, and now, you know, this whole story is unraveling where the guy who was shot has now come back to life. <laughs> and so, and everyone's wondering, Bruce Wayne's wondering, like, Hey, how is this guy, you know, where'd he go? He, he got shot six years ago. I was there. I saw him get shot. His brains got blown out. And I never found out who the shooter was. Well, now Batman meets the shooter. Uh, the shooter, obviously, uh, is Spawn. Well, not obviously, but the shooter was Spawn. When Al Simmons, before he became Spawn, he was the one who was hired to assassinate uh, this Vesper guy and uh, and killed him, and thus kick-starting the, Croato the return of Croatoa on Gotham. And that's pretty much what's happening. It's bo both of them working this case, Batman teaming up with Spawn, trying to figure out who, you know, how is Vesper still alive, how this involves uh, this guy named Dare, Mr. Dare, who is a descendant of someone from Roanoke Island, which I'm like, how how is that possible? If everyone disappeared, how could they be a descendant? Um, maybe they had a cousin somewhere that wasn't on Roanoke Island. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, it's 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 kind of neat. Uh, then the dead come back at one point, you know, and Croatoa reveals themselves as Vesper, and Vesper is like, hey, I'm, I'm actually the demon Croatoa, and I'm here to sacrifice hundreds of thousands of souls of Gotham to Satan because I want to move up as a knight of hell. And Spawn and Batman are here to stop that from happening. So, yeah, that's pretty much the story. I mean, it's it's not that deep. It's actually, I, su I was surprised how little I liked this. I was like, I feel like I remember liking these a lot more. I mean, you know, I'm a big Spawn fan, and this was part of my Spawn collection, so I'm like, maybe that's what it was. I just Maybe I just liked it because Spawn was in it. I go, or maybe I just liked the Frank Miller, you know, J Todd McFarlane one. So after, you know, this story ends and you kind of get the conclusion of it, which, I don't know, it kind of just wraps up and it's it's really fast and they bring back the dead and all these skeletons and dead people are like walking around Gotham, but then nobody stops them or, or anything. They just kind of, they once they defeat Vesper, all the dead just go back to their graves, I guess. And it's very kind of anticlimactic and doesn't feel like, even though the stakes seemed super high, because everyone kept saying they were, there wasn't a lot of showing the stakes being high. So I don't know. In the end, I ended up not liking this one as much as I thought I remembered liking it. Um, but I guess this one might be set in continuity. So when the new one comes out soon, 
it might build off this story in some way. I, again, I don't know for sure, but it, it possibly could. The story that I definitely remember more was this one here, which is uh, the Batman Spawn crossover by Frank Miller and Todd McFarlane. The only thing is I didn't realize one thing about this. When in continuity it was set, because the other one doesn't outright say it's in continuity, but it doesn't say it's not in continuity either, so it just kind of leaves it up to you. Uh, Al Simmons at this point isn't even called Spawn in the War Devil one, so he doesn't even know that name. He's still just Al. And so uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. I'm like, okay, this is very early in Spawn's career, and it's a little later in Batman's career, so this is kind of a nice team-up. But this one I found out from this hardcover, uh, and I think it's printed in the original, and I just overlooked it or just didn't even think about it, but it says Spawn Batman is a companion piece to DC Comics' Batman The Dark Knight Returns. So this, for those of you who collect Frank Miller, like Dark Knight, uh, you know, Dark Knight Returns, and then you have Year One, obviously, um, and then you have the, the Dark Knight Strikes Again, and then Dark Knight 3 Master Race, and then I think they did All-Star Batman and Robin, which was technically a, re a renumbering of, uh, or, you know, set in the Dark Knight universe. Well, your collection is not complete unless you add the Spawn Batman book uh, that is printed here, because uh, that is this is set in the Frank Miller Dark Knight universe, apparently. Uh, so, uh, which I thought was interesting. I was like, oh, I, I don't know if I ever really knew that. Spawn Batman as a companion piece to the DC Comics Dark Knight Returns, right up there in green. I, so it was there. I just, I if I read it before, it didn't register. So for some reason, when I was reading this, I was like, oh, okay, I don't know if I knew that before. So apparently I did. The information was here at the in the, you know, the title page and stuff, and I just didn't read it. So, lesson learned. Always read the title pages, kids. Um, but yeah, so this collection has that crossover, that book I just showed you. It has it in here with Todd McFarlane drawn Batman and Spawn, which is probably my favorite thing about it because, unfortunately, it suffers from typical Frank Miller dialogue <laughs> and, uh, and nothing's really accomplished. Every time Batman and Spawn are on page together, this is the most they talk to try to work something out, and then the rest is just them you know, Batman calling Spawn a punk and then Spawn being like, I don't like being called a punk and then them fighting each other. And meanwhile, there's this woman who is, uh, you know, coming into Gotham. She's a humanitarian, but it turns out she's not. She's kind of evil and she has a connection to Spawn and Bruce Wayne in a way. And so they team up to, to take her down and she has giant robots that she's built and they have to fight giant robots. I mean, it's, it's pretty uninteresting from a story standpoint. Actually, I, the first story I ended up going, now that I had them both back to back, I was like, yeah, you know what? War Devils, at least there's an attempt at a, a story there. And even though it wraps up a little too quickly, it still felt like a story. And this one just felt like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we just threw these two guys together and there's like not a lot to it? And uh, and that's what this second part feels like. But I love McFarlane's art so much. So it was just cool to you know, see it, you know, reprinted, rescanned, you know, it looks, it looks really nice. And this hardcover is really awesome. It's a nice addition of these two stories. Um, but it did, I will say one thing it did do is that it did get me pumped up because I've been really enjoying the Spawn books uh, of the past couple years. I, I've been enjoying them pretty much consistently. I've always kind of liked Spawn, but some of the writing, I'm like, eh, okay, it's not great or whatever, but they've done some interesting things lately with the, the, the comics and branching out to Gunslinger Spawn and the Scorched and all the other ones and King Spawn. Um, I've been liking that stuff as well. And so with Todd on a roll with those and on a roll with his figures for DC and now teaming up with Greg Capullo, who used to draw Spawn, uh, you know, back when Todd, after he left the book monthly as an artist, he stayed on as a writer and Greg Capullo took over as the artist. And that's kind of where a lot of people know Greg Capullo's work from, his early work. And so the fact that those two are coming together to tell a Batman Spawn story, this time with Greg Capullo's version of the Joker, where his you know face has been ripped off from New 52, and uh, some other characters are going to squeeze in there, other Batman villains. I think that's kind of what I wanted in these. I was hoping to have like overt kill, you know, teaming up with like, a, you know, a, a rope like Brainiac or something, or I don't know, just like I wanted more of that, you know, that kind of standard team up stuff going on. And this book didn't really give a lot of that. Although the Croatoa story out of the two, I thought was the stronger story, but the stronger art was definitely for me, the Todd McFarlane one in here, where you get to see, you know, him, you know, drawing Batman and Spawn at the you know peak of his career, definitely. Um, although I still like his stuff. I still think he's actually gotten just as good as an artist he's still kicking butt and doing awesome but this was back in the heyday when you know in the 90s when spawn was just made a big splash on the comic book scene and so to have that in here 
I'm like, that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously I'm glad I have this as part of my collection. I thought they did a great job on this print job, this matte uh, finish. Um, it's really, really nice. You got the original cover back there and this new cover by Capullo. Um, and then we're going to start seeing the new one, the new one shot coming out, Batman Spawn. And then also Spawn's going to be on a bunch of variant covers for different DC books, like um, I think Poison Ivy and Catwoman, uh, Superman. So you're going to actually see Spawn against, you know, teaming up or on a cover at least with other DC characters for the first time ever, uh, which is really awesome. And then I think there's even a Wildcats cover with Spawn, which is cool because I have the original Spawn Wildcats crossover. So that's cool that they're, you know, reuniting uh, you know, on the cover at least. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Those are my thoughts of Batman Spawn. I thought this was, it's fun. It's a fun read, but it's not like, I don't know. I, I guess I was like hoping to like the story more. And that's where my hopes now are shifted to the new one. Uh, now that they have some bat villains in there and hopefully they have clown. I think it's clown and Joker versus Batman and uh, Spawn. That seems like a more stiff, you know, typical standard crossover kind of scenario where you take two villains and two heroes and you kind of do it. So I applaud them for not going that route uh, in this one and kind of doing their own thing with, you know, some new villains and stuff. Um, you know, and especially the first one, it was more of a Spawn type villain with Croatoa. It was a demon. Um, but, you know, to throw it into Gotham and, and involve Batman, I'm like, okay, I like that. But the second story where it had the humanitarian lady, uh, something love, I think is her name, and she's, you know, building robots and they, and that's all. And then at the end, Batman is just like, th you know, throws a battering into to Spawn's face and Spawn's like, are we going to, you know, maybe I'll see you around. And he's like, nah, and thank <laughs> or whatever, and throws the battering in his face. Yeah, it's a pretty classic image. So there you go. The battering right in his face. And that's just kind of how the book ends. And then they put some pinups in the back here, but not many, just actually two pinups. So, so there's not a lot of extra material in this. Um, so yeah, but if you do miss out on this, don't feel too bad. There will be a version coming out in April, I think of 2023, that has these two issues printed in it and the new one, and it'll be a deluxe size. So it'll be bigger. So the artwork will be more showcased. Um, and it'll have all three of the crossovers in it and hopefully a pinup gallery in the back of all the variant covers that Spawn's going to be on for DC in the month of December. Um, that would be a cool way to just kind of pull it all together. So again, these are selling out. So if you miss out on this, don't worry. In April, you'll get a second chance to get this and the new one all in one book together. But if you read this book, let me know what you think down below. And if you haven't, I just kind of spoiled a good chunk of it for you. But trust me, there's still some cool twists and stuff in this story. And the artwork is a lot of fun to work uh, look at, especially with the, the McFarlane book. The Klaus Janssen and Alan Grant one, it's still cool because that was like that era of Batman. But uh, I'm just a big McFarlane fan. So seeing his artwork, you know, I just always jump at the chance to see more, uh, you know, more, more McFarlane artwork. So that's just my personal opinion. Let me know yours down below and we'll continue talking down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in Gotham. Peace.